Hi, today is day 96 and we are going to take stock of our emotions today in our inner world. So if you've been following along this program and you've been doing things, you no doubt see that we've been, we've been focusing on the outer world, you know, cleaning things up, challenging ourselves, doing stuff, but we have to challenge our emotions every single day. So when we have a symptom, we have to challenge the emotion underneath that symptom. What am I feeling? Am I feeling sadness? Am I feeling loneliness? Am I feeling despair? Am I feeling hopelessness? Am I feeling angry? Am I feeling fear? What am I feeling? What are my symptoms trying to tell me? What are the emotions underneath that they're trying to show me? And we have to listen to these and then we have to choose something different. So it's not enough to just do the inner work and focus on it all because that's not what we want to do. If we focus on our fear all the time, then we're going to get more of it. If we focus on our anger, we're going to get more of it. If we focus on our sadness, we're going to get more of it. What we want to do is we want to release it. We want to hear it. We want to acknowledge it. We want to release it and we want to replace it with something else. So when we get up in the morning, we want to say, our emotional work, right? We want to say, okay, this is the situation. This is my reality today. I can't change it. So I'm going to accept it fully. Like you should repeat this to yourself every morning. I'm going to fully accept this, but I will not, I will fully accept this, but I will work to change it. And I will work to make my re the reality that I want to come true. So I will commit myself 100% to believing in myself, to having this in, like just belief every single day that my body can do this and I'm going to put forth extraordinary effort every day, in every way, every single day until I am healed, no matter what, period. Right? So this is the kind of thing that we need to say to ourselves. We need to accept our reality every day, even if we don't like it. We need to fully embrace, like, we can't change this. This is where we are. There is no point in resisting it. Resistance causes more. So we accept it. We fully embrace it. We don't like it, so we're going to work to change it. We accept what is, and we are committed to changing and to doing taking steps every single day to carrying out our routine until it's changed. One of those things in our routine is time to reflect through journaling. So if you're gonna sit down and just let all these negative emotions out on paper, that's great, we're releasing them. Or you can do tapping, a lot of people do tapping, you can find videos of that online, right? And you can release, you can do EFT, right? Faster EFT. You can do EMDR, you can do talk therapy, you can do journaling, you can, um, you know, there's so many methods to unburdening our emotions so that they don't turn into symptoms, to acknowledging the feeling underneath the symptom. It's The symptom is real, the symptom is real, right? The headache is real, the pain is real, the suffering is real, the stomach, you know, the symptom that you're having is real. But what does that make you feel? Sad, hopeless, lost, discouraged, alone. What are the feelings that that symptom makes you feel? And we want to dislodge those from our body. We want to get them out. You can meditate, you can journal, you can do EFT, you can do EMDR, you can do... Um, all kinds of inner work, right? But we want to we want to allow those feelings to guide us. Like, gosh, I'm really lonely, or I'm really feeling guilt, or I'm really feeling fear, or I'm really feeling shame, or I'm really feeling sadness, or I'm really feeling anger. And this feeling is keeping keeping me stuck. It's the feeling. You know, all the symptoms are sensations but it's the meaning that we give them that makes us cry, makes us feel like giving up, makes us wanna quit, makes us 
isolate ourselves, makes us shelter ourselves, makes us say no to things instead of yes to life. It's the feelings that it gives us. And so we want to dislodge those feelings, but not only do we want to write about them or think about them in meditation or tap on them, but then we want to let them go. How do we let them go? You know, maybe you rip up the, the paper that you were writing or you delete it, or you imagine like putting it in a locked box and dropping it to the bottom of the ocean. Whatever kind of visualization uh, Asian technique that you can do, or we scream at the top, or we just cry, or we let it out, we let it go. Um, and then we have to make a choice. We have to say, what emotion do I want? I want the opposite of that. So if I'm sadness, I want joy. I want peace. I want love. I want to feel accepted and respected and whatever feelings that you want, right? And then you have to give those feelings to the world and they will come back to you. So you can't wait to have those feelings come to you. You have to start looking for those, giving those, focusing on other things. It's not a matter of distracting yourself from feeling the thought, it's acknowledging the thought and then trying to replace it with something else. Can you focus on a hobby or a goal or something that you want in your life or a positive thing that makes other people happy? Can you focus on something that's going to give you what you want? Love, joy, peace, connection, respect, um, understand, uh, being understood, whatever feeling it is that you want, can you give that to the world in some way? Can you focus on something else? Can you create joyful future plans or joyful um, future relationships or just how can you bring that to the world and start to give it to yourself? start to find it in the world. Because when we're hurting, we look around and we see painful things and things that are wrong and everything that's wrong, right? So we want to acknowledge that, but then look around and start saying, what can I do to feel love today? What can I do to feel joy? What would give me the slightest bit? Increments, right? Pain is hard. Suffering is hard. Illness is hard. But what can we do? What can we do every day that works on our inner terrain, right? Acknowledges all those terrible feelings, lets them go, releases them, and then floods ourselves or tries to create the world that we want, create the emotions that we want, that inner feeling that we want, that happiness, that joy, that love. What can we do? How can we give it to the world? How can we open so that we can receive? How can we allow ourselves to receive from others? What positions can we put ourselves we want to stop focusing on what's wrong and start to focus on what's right or what could be right or what we want to be right or what we choose, right? We can feel it. We can feel the sickness, but we can choose to focus on healing. We can feel the pain, but we can focus, choose to focus on love or, or doing something for others or, you know, so we have to make some choices and we have to do the inner work. So today, make sure that, you know, I've challenged you already to do the inner work, but make sure that you have something in your daily routine every single day that is acknowledging the feelings that the symptoms are making you feel and finding a way to hear them, love them, and let them go and replace them with what you want. So you need to find what feels right for you. There's many different ways. We've tried putting some into our routine. If you're not resonating with those, do another. But you, there has to be something every single day that you can do that acknowledges, hears. You can cry, you can scream, you can spend time really feeling that, but we're releasing it. We're releasing it. How can we release it? And how can we Focus our energy on what we want. Choose something different. Choose to fill ourselves up. You know, there's a great book, As a Man Thinketh. So what we think we become, you know, it's that old secret thing. And I know it's easier said than done, but we need to focus our thoughts. Just like Bruce Lipton from Biology of Belief says, focus our thoughts on what we want. And soon our body will catch up. Oh, you know, like it's very easy 
say you've got a splitting headache, like I have symptoms all over my eyes all the time, so it's very easy for me to focus on my eyes, right? I'm thinking about my eyes, I'm thinking about how I can fix my eyes, I'm, I'm thinking about how I can relieve my eyes, I'm thinking about my eyes, my eyes sort of take up my internal and external world because my thoughts are going to them constantly, right? So of course my eyes are gonna be sore, of course I'm gonna focus on the thing, I'm focusing on the thing I don't want. And the, so the intensity grows because that's where your focus is. But if I choose, I'm going to focus on my kids. I'm going to focus on going for, you know, a walk with them or a bike ride or speaking to them or talking to them about something else. And you put your focus on what you want. Suddenly your focus is over here, not here. It's over here, not here. And the more our focus is on what we want, suddenly our body goes, oh, we don't have to, we don't want, we're not focusing on this anymore. We're, we're over here. And eventually the body catches up and it's like, oh, we don't have to pay all our attention to this. So that's just a sensation. We don't have to think about it. We don't, aren't going to spend our days fixated on it. We're going to, we're going to do this instead. We're going to focus on this instead. We're going to feel this instead. We're going to choose this instead. And over time, I mean, I'm sure just like my eyes, I've spent probably years thinking about them over and over and over. So you have to choose something else over and over and over and over. So your thoughts can catch up and your mind, you can get it. And you're like, that's where I want my mind to be, to go. So that's where I have to stay. And that's the only way. If we're focused here, everything's focused here. If we acknowledge this, we see the feelings it makes us feel, all the things that we feel, we release that through breathing, we release it through crying or screaming or journaling or however, and then we say, I choose this. And it, our mind tries to pull us back, right? It tries to pull me back. Think about your eyes, think about your eyes, what can you do? No, I'm over here now. I'm thinking about this now. This is what I choose. I don't choose this, I choose this. And so we have to make that choice over and over. Sometimes we have to make that choice second by second. But eventually, it catches up, and then we don't have. We only have to make that choice maybe a couple times a day, and then maybe we're only making that choice every week, or the symptom flares up every now and then. But we're not choosing it anymore, and suddenly our body just gives up, and it says, "Oh, we don't need to focus on this anymore. It's not a problem. We don't need to solve that. We're over here. This is what we're doing. This is what we choose. This is what our focus is on." So. I know this has been kind of a long one, but it's such an important one. Make sure that you've challenged yourself every single today to work on your inner emotions, to release them, and to choose a better emotion and a better reality. And that's the way. Love is the way. We want to go forward. We want to, to focus on the positive and the things that we want. 